that, of course, is the set from the J.P. Patches show. Yeah, exactly. Well, come on, let's continue our TV tour. Now, who can guess what this perfectly recreated set is from? What is this from? What's it? Breaking Ballard, right? The guys from the 206 donated it, and uh, we're so thrilled to have it. And look right over here. Who are those characters? They're perfect renditions of those guys. Come on over. Let's get a photo op. You can Facebook this one. Your friends will love it. Yo, this is embarrassing, yo. Heck, it's easy money. Yeah, but playing statues of ourselves. Well, until they get the real statues, we gotta keep doing this. <laughs> oh, here comes somebody else. The 206 with John Keister, Pat Cashman, and Chris Cashman. Now from the Fremont Studios in Seattle, the 206. Well, hi there. Thank you for checking us out. This is the 206. And if you're watching at home right now, you'd be giving our studio audience some great solidarity if you, too, would watch the show standing up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> would you do that? We are, yeah, OK. We're coming to you from the fabulous Fremont Studios in Fremont, which is a place where clothing is suggested but not required. Right. <laughs> in fact, not every member of our studio audience tonight is clothed. Yes. We have asked those folks to stand in the back. Uh, they are welcome to be here, but they don't really get to be in the front row, you understand. Of course, our entire camera crew and technical staff are also naked as jaybirds yeah. right now. Right. Yeah. And Good we would you. have to say in a couple of cases, very, very. impressive. Yeah. Especially wow. you, Mike. Yes. Very nice. Fremont's a great neighborhood. Wallingford's that way. Finney Ridge over there. Sure. Queen Anne that way. Ballard, just a ludicrous throwaway that way. Yeah, uh, by the way, big news out of Ballard. Organizers of their annual Seafood Fest, they've announced that they now have their own neighborhood crime fighter, like a superhero named Anchor. Yes, it's very exciting. <laughs> Whenever crime breaks out, Anchor will toss off his rain slicker, spring into action, and sink to the bottom of the Ballard lot. <laughs> Now, some people may think that there can't be that big of a problem around there, but make no mistake about it, there's stuff going on everywhere these days. Yeah, even Ballard. Yep, even Ballard. I think this is gonna be my best batch ever, Jesse. Yo, what are you making, brownies? Brownies? Don't make me laugh. Yo, I never do. You're always so pissed off. That's because I'm under pressure, Jesse. Unbelievable pressure. Pressure that a dweeb like you couldn't possibly understand. Yo, take a chill pill. I will. Just as soon as I finish making them. All this stuff? I sure do. I need $50,000, and this product is the way I'm gonna get it. Yo, 50K, that's mad money, son. Yeah. Yo, setting up operations here in Ballard, genius, son. Nobody will suspect it. Damn it. Somebody's at the door. This is just not what I needed right now. Chill, yo. I'll get rid of them. All right, but be careful. Don't let them know I'm here. That could ruin everything. Howdy, the uh, homeowner isn't in, is he? Uh, no, no, he's not here. Yeah, I haven't seen him. He's been gone like a mad long time, yo. So, yeah, not here. You're not in the, the middle of something, are you? This isn't a bad time. Uh, I'm in the middle of cleaning. Yeah, uh, it's bathroom day, yo. I found some mold in the shower, mad nasty. Yeah, I'm scrubbing it. Well, that would explain the outfit. That, yeah, that's why I'm wearing it. Yeah, this because of the chemicals, the, the cleaning chemicals, you know. Look, are you sure that you're alone here? Yeah, yeah, just me, yo. Definitely it's nobody else here downstairs or anything. Because we saw that car in the driveway and it's licensed to the homeowner. That 
dead battery. Yeah, he has to take the bus. Uh, he did take the bus when he left town a while ago, so. All right, well, uh, looks like we gotta move on then. Okay, all right, yeah. All right, have a, have a good rest of your day. Yo, they looked official, yo, but it's cool. I got rid of them. Good, good. Because I need that $50,000. I gotta have it, Jesse. I gotta have the $50,000. You think I'm overacting? Yeah, a little bit, yo. You're sure they're gone? Yes, they left, yo. Good. You know, I never thought it would be so hard to get rid of 50 grand. I know. It's an hour. Runner up? Sure, let's do it. by Stingray Auto Repair and by Pemco Insurance. Spot a Pemco Northwest profile in the audience and tweet who it is using hashtag SpotPemco. Get it right and you're entered to win exclusive tickets to the 206. Go to SpotPemco.com for complete details. Okay, we from the 206 have some great groundbreaking ideas on where to take your advertising. All right, now dig this. Northwest Profiles. Hey, blue tarp camper, we're like you. I already did a little that bit one. Okay, how about this? Hey, Miramore off-leash dog lady, you have one that one already. Oh, okay, what about, hey, roadside chainsaw wood carver? Did it. Sorry we wasted your time. You're just looking at three over-caffeinated numbskulls. Over-caffeinated? We haven't done that yet. I think that was a home run. Definitely. Nailed it. Hi, John Keister here, just enjoying Seattle's most iconic landmark. Oh, no, not the needle, over there. Yeah, that's Stingray Auto Repair. Family owned and driven by genuine customer service. They say it's dealership quality service and repair at discount prices. So take your car to Stingray Auto Repair and tell them John Keister sent you. No, don't, don't do that, that'd be weird. I mean, no, no, do take your car to Stingray. Just don't tell them John Keister sent you. Well, I'm voting for John because he's a leader and a great communicator. I've seen John talking to ordinary people. He even looks them in the eye, and he nods when they say things to him. And it's not just people in his neighborhood. I mean, I've seen John talking to construction workers. I mean, the guy's actually wearing a hard hat and protective eyewear. It's like he's one of them. John is my kind of candidate because he isn't afraid, even when he should be. John is also clearly endorsed by scientists and doctors. I mean, how else do you explain this footage? His ability to connect with the next generation is really important to me. His ability to rally the community is really impressive. I mean, the guy runs the most successful fight club in the state out of his basement. I mean, sure, it's illegal, but John's looking to change that. He's so passionate about getting to know people in his community. Uh, he'll walk from neighborhood to neighborhood just to rifle through their mail. When it comes right down to it, I think that John really needs this, you know? I mean, the guy just sits on his porch day in and day out. Kind of Hi, I'm John, and I'm asking for your vote because I want to bring about change. Now, we don't have to nail down exactly what that change is right now, but rest assured, if you give me the vote, I will find something that needs changing, and I will change it. Vote for John. Please, he really needs this. This ad paid for by John's mother, who wants him elected and out of her house. That was a little bit of a surprise. Uh, what are you running for, John? Because you never really actually said it in that commercial, and I'd actually never seen the commercial before, by the way. Oh, yeah, didn't I tell you I'm, run I'm running for mayor? Of Seattle? Well, most of it, yeah. <laughs> well, that's interesting, because a couple of days ago, I announced that I am running for mayor of Seattle as well. You know, that's great news, Dad, by the way. You're gonna be terrific, so. Yeah, well, thanks, but didn't I just see you in the ad for him? Well, that is before I knew that you were running, and now that I know, I'm behind you 50%. So. 
<laughs> well, that's something. I, I already uh, had a campaign rally, John. Uh, how about you? Have you? Well, had yeah, one? yeah. No, I just had a, a big kickoff. Yeah, I had my big, oh. my big event. Did you, did you get any video of it? Yeah, some of it. We, we got some of that. I'm John Keister, and I'm running for mayor because Seattle has a lot of problems that require bold, new thinking, the kind of bold thinking you'll get from a Keister administration. Now, Seattle has become a mecca for the wealthy. Look how our roads are choked with their benzos and their beamers, and all in the midst of all of this abundance, our school system is crumbling. This is nuts. What's the answer? Close all the private schools. I'm talking to you, Lakeside, Bush, University Prep, O'Day, Birchie, yes, even the hippie ones. Let the software people send Kendra, Sophie, Aiden, Trey, and Ashley to Rainier Beach, to Franklin, to Cleveland, and then you watch how quickly our schools become world class. And that applies to every school within the city limits, except for holy names, no. You let those girls loose in the general population and all hell is gonna break loose. I would increase funding for schools, but I'm gonna hold back 700 bucks from Ingram until whoever tagged my car fesses up. Now, come on, Rams, you know who did it. By giving me your vote, you're trusting me to make major decisions about the city's future. Therefore, I'll appoint an advisory committee consisting of Paul Allen, Jeff Bezos, and Bill Gates, because, come on, folks, let's just make it official. Follow your keister to greatness. John for mayor. Thank you. Interesting. Uh, yeah, wasn't he great? Uh, you know, my kickoff speech was also pretty damn good. All right, well, hey, we can watch that later. Well, can't wait. Uh, look, you got look. One thing is for sure, you guys got to embrace social media, Facebook, Twitter. It's got to be a part of your campaigns, all right? You guys got to navigate this modern world. I know it can be confusing. It can be tricky. That's why we brought in somebody young and hip here to offer some thoughts about this whole thing. Kelsey Cook is here. Kelsey Cook. Hi. Hi. Oh, thank you. Hi. Hi. Thanks, you guys. I'm excited to be here. So, make some noise if you have a smartphone. Yeah, a lot of you, okay. So I'm assuming that most of you have had the experience of texting somebody and autocorrect changing one of your words without you realizing it. Does this happen? So this happened to me a couple weeks ago. My childhood cat, Callie, passed away and I was devastated. I texted my friend Jenna the news of the death, but when I texted her, autocorrect changed the name Callie into Kelly? which is the name of a mutual friend of ours. <laughs> yeah, and I didn't realize the name had changed. So this is the morbid text conversation I ended up having with Jenna. Hey, Jen, I've got some sad news. Kelly's dead. <laughs> oh my God, what happened? She got hit by a car. <laughs> Holy crap, have you called an ambulance? <laughs> I already buried her. <laughs> you buried her? Where? In my backyard. <laughs> wow, Kels. I don't know if that was the right thing to do. <laughs> dot, dot, dot. <laughs> well, I was really upset, and I haven't even told you the worst part yet. She was pregnant. <laughs> what? How do you know that? Because her nipples were huge. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah. Uh, at that point, Jenna called and was like, what the hell is going on? And we figured it out. But the best part of all that was showing the conversation to Kelly the next day, <laughs> right? Because how often do you get to see your friend's reaction to your supposed death? You find out who your real friends are, you know? <laughs> And poor Kelly had to look at Jenna and be like, wow, cool, Jen. Happy to know that when you hear I've been hit by a car, buried in a backyard, 
and that Kelsey's checking out my huge dead nipples, <laughs> your only reaction is just, wow, Kels, I don't know if that was the right thing to do. <laughs> Somewhere, there's a line between optimism and just plain crazy. Between, hey, the sun might come out, and, hey, that might be frostbite. But around here, that line can be a little cloudy. Goose bumped beach bum, you're one of us. And you deserve a better kind of insurance company. A Northwest company that'll never leave you out in the cold. Pemco, we're a lot like you. A little different. Hi, uh, John Keister again, and um, I just have to say that that last commercial ended a little weird, and that's completely the opposite of Stingray Auto. I mean, dealership quality at discount prices, so if you wanted to bring your car down to Stingray, I think you could say that uh, a friend of John Keister sent you, and if they say who, tell them a doctor, a really smart doctor, and then they'll fix your car. So come on down to Stingray and tell them a doctor friend of John Keister sent you. I gotta find a doctor. You'll never see the same Woodland Park Zoo twice. Every day, every animal inspires awe. The young and wide-eyed. The wild. The practically prehistoric. Each generation more unpredictable than the last. Discovery and surprise lie around every corner. So come see what's new today. Because these sloth bear cubs won't be cubs forever. Visit zoo.org to plan your trip. My fellow citizens, I stand before you today to announce my intention to run for mayor of Seattle. I stand before you in all modesty and humility as nothing more than what I am, the simple savior of our city's destiny. Few people may remember that I was the visionary that first proposed the building of a tunnel system here. And it is that kind of tunnel vision I will bring to the mayor's office. These are modern times that call for a modern candidate, and I am that candidate, ready to bring our city into the world of the latest technology and trends. Hang on a minute. I'm getting a call. Hello. This is your technology candidate. Yes. No, this wouldn't be a good time. I've given a speech. Later. Yeah. This city has had many strong mayors, and I will be one too. But when I say strong, I'm not talking about big muscles. I'm gonna be a mayor that works hard, but sitting down at my desk, in the mayor's office, doing the work, not wasting precious hours every day, jogging or swimming or lifting weights. Let me repeat, I will not work out if I am elected your mayor. Will I offer a surefire plan to improve education? Will I preside over a city that creates more jobs for every citizen? Will I help ease the decades of transportation problems we have around here? Will I? Yeah. Pretty sure. But I, I, not now, because I got a call coming in. Hang on. Hello. Yeah. Hi, I'm John Keister from the 206, and this is the 411. Well, Amazon has announced plans to build two giant spherical buildings in the Lake Union neighborhood. Proving once again what people have said for years, Amazon has huge balls. <laughs> A report says highly radioactive waste is leaking out of an underground containment vessel in the Hanford Nuclear Reservation. The report will be marked urgent and placed on top of the 68 other reports that have said exactly the same thing since 1945. <laughs> Passengers at SeaTac are missing planes because of long security lines. While this is causing an inconvenience, travelers say it's more than worth it to stand still for five minutes while a stranger puts his hands down your pants. <laughs> the biggest protests have come from SeaTac massage parlors who claim the TSA pat downs have almost put them out of business. <laughs> There's Safeco Stadium, CenturyLink Field, and now there's an effort to come up with a name for the Tacoma Dome. I've got an idea. How about the Tacoma Dome? 
Target has announced it will provide a concierge service in its makeup department. They won't have the same expertise as the Nordstrom cuties, but promise to be twice as condescending. <laughs> Finally, after more than four decades, Pat O'Day will not do the radio broadcast of the Seafair Hydra. I know, I know. O'Day plans to do the call anyway at a race day party in his home, and media analysts speculate that he will probably have more listeners in his living room than the Cairo broadcast. I'm John Keister from the 206, and this has been the 411. In some parts of the world, there's wool sock weather, and then there's sandal weather, and never the twain shall meet. Around here, the weather isn't always so decisive. Thus, an ingenious hybrid. Sandals and socks guy, you're one of us, and you deserve a better kind of insurance company, a Northwest company that's dedicated to helping Northwest people. Pemco Insurance, we're a lot like you, a little different. Hi, John Keister here, just enjoying Seattle's most iconic landmark. Oh, no, not the needle, over there. Yeah, that's Stingray Auto Repair, family owned and driven by genuine customer service. They say it's dealership quality service and repair at discount prices. So take your car to Stingray Auto Repair and tell them John Keister sent you. No, don't, don't do that, that'd be weird. I mean, no, no, but do take your car to Stingray, just don't tell them John Keister sent you. The 206, brought to you by Pemco. We're a lot like you, a little different. And by Stingray Auto Repair. Locally owned and operated for over 40 years, Perv Appliance has become the most talked about appliance store in the state. Hi, I'm Merv Perv. And I'm Irv Perv. Come in and feel the Perv touch. We want to satisfy you. We want you to come in and look at our bulging selection. Yeah. Come on, let us whip something out for you. Mm -hmm. You see something you like, you can touch it. Yeah. Well, the fridge is great. It's really awesome. We love it a lot. Yeah. But the buying experience was... Well, it was kind of weird, wouldn't you say? Yeah, I thought it was a little creepy. Yeah, um, you, more than I think about it, I, I don't think I would trust a perv with my business ever again. <laughs> the prices were great, but they kept eyeballing my wife. There's something disturbing about those two guys. We pervs really take the time to embrace our customers. And we've embraced a lot of people. That's right, Dad. And with decades of selling appliances to customers across the Northwest, there's probably already a perv in your neighborhood. They are pervs, so we should have seen it coming. It is their name. Yeah, so... I just thought it was ironic or something. I didn't yeah. think they were actually. Pervs. I know they come from a long line of pervs, and I appreciate what they do for the community, but come on. And we're donating a portion of every sale to support education. Mm -hmm. We're installing appliances and school cafeterias district-wide. That's right, son. We hope to expand across the state so that someday there'll be a perv in every school. <laughs> Remember how they kept pressuring us? Yeah. They really, really wanted to deliver after 11 o'clock at night. I mean, I didn't want a perv in my house, especially two of them. Come take advantage of our summer sale. The hottest prices of the year. Yeah, real hot. Perv Appliance, all your appliance needs with Perv Service. Be sure to ask about our Perv installers. I'd love to come to your house. Perv Appliance, just two blocks south of Flem's Restaurant. We're out of time. Well, that's Thank it. you. That's all we have. Thank you so much. Bye bye. See you later. The 206 is recorded before a live studio audience at Fremont Studios. Plan your next event in Fremont. Go to FremontStudios.com. Promotional consideration provided by Tutabella with four convenient locations. And by Cadence Winery, voted Seattle Magazine's Winemaker of the Year. And by Two Beers Brewing Company, because life's more honest after two beers.